Good morning, it's Air Talk. I'm Larry Mantle. Great to have you with us. Coming up a little bit later on the program, Saudi Arabia and its connection to ISIS. But first, some Muslim women who wear the traditional headscarf known as a hijab have been on edge since the recent mass shootings in San Bernardino. One of the two shooters, Tashfin Malik, wore a hijab. There have been reports of headscarf-wearing Muslims being targets of everything from dirty looks to physical threats. I'd like to hear from Muslim Air Talk listeners today. Do you or your wife or girlfriend wear a headscarf? Why or why not? If you wore one before and you stopped recently, did you find that people looked at you differently or now treat you differently as a result of the change? If you're a Muslim woman who's rarely worn a headscarf, have you felt pressured by other Muslims to cover? I, I'm interested in looking at all possible sides of this issue, covering or not covering, pressure on either side to do so or not. We're at 866-893-KPECC, 866-893-5722, or the air talk page, kpecc.org. Again, um, the request going out to those of you that are Muslim listening to air talk, if um, you're a woman who covers who doesn't cover, or a man who has a woman in your life covers or doesn't cover, what are the reasons behind that one way or the other? Joining me to talk about the issue is Hala Arafa, who is a retired uh, journalist, uh, was broadcaster for The Voice of America, and author of a recent op-ed piece titled as Muslim Women, We Actually Ask You Not to Wear the Hijab in the Name of Interfaith. Hala, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Larry. Uh, yeah, first of all, why why do you argue against Muslim women covering? Um, well, it, it is out of my own experience and Asra's own experience as well. We grew up in a modern progressive society where this covering up of a scarf or a veil was unheard of. As a matter of fact, in the 60s and 70s, if somebody had suggested this, they'll be laughed off. It it was so outrageous and, and so unthinkable um, until the early 80s when the invasion of the Saudi thought. Um, it, it's very strict um, it's, um, interpretation of certain things in, done in a certain way. and But uh, they're free to believe whatever they want to believe. Um, we did not subscribe to this idea that just invaded our societies and completely transformed it. Well, you argue you argue that really it 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 begins with the premise that women somehow need to be protected and that men have to be protected from their impulses towards women and that this puts a burden on women to play that role. Right. This is what they say. They say it is our choice because we need to be protected, and they're free to say whatever they like. Uh, but from my own point of view and from my own understanding of my religion, um, it's the equality between men and women is much more important. The respect of the society for the woman to be in, walking around and... and and living freely and and just being treated as a member of society without any uh restrictions or imposition on on what she what she wears what she does yeah all right, Hala Rafa with us, who is an editor and broadcaster at Voice of America, and with Asra Nomani, co-wrote an op-ed piece in the Washington Post, uh, asking those who, in a show of solidarity with some Muslim women, have chosen to wear hijab uh, as a, a means of showing that uh, religious solidarity, uh, saying, please don't do it, because uh, Hala and Asra don't see it quite the same way. Also with us is Hosai Mojadi who is an Irvine-based Muslim blogger and activist. Uh, she recently wrote a, a post that provides safety tips for Muslim women who wear the hijab. Thank you very much, uh, Hosai, for being with us. We appreciate it. 
Thank you so much, Larry. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, you know, so first of all, do you see this as just a matter of, of personal choice, or do you think theologically it's clear one way or the other that a woman should cover or not? Well, Larry, I mean, as is well documented, and as you mentioned, there has been a significant rise in anti-Islamic rhetoric and Islamophobia in this country post 9-11. And unfortunately, Muslim women who wear the hijab uh, or the headscarf are often the most vulnerable targets. And I I personally know several uh, women who have had verbal or physical, you know, who've been attacked in the past few weeks. So I think the focus about hijab, given the current climate, should not be to debate its legitimacy in the Islamic framework, as Ms. Nomani and Ms. Arafa's article attempted to do, but rather, because why, they're, first of all, they're not scholars, and, and, and we really, we have our own... But they cited scholars. Yes, but there's also a rich legacy in history of Islamic, you know, academia and that already has addressed these issues. So I think for them to attempt to, you know, to to bring this issue at this time is just, it's out of place. We need to be focusing on empowering Muslim women, especially because so many do feel threatened out there. And it's just, it's divisive to, to take the argument away from the focus, which is how can we protect Muslim women in this current climate and give them the freedom to be able to assert themselves as Americans as and, and enjoy the freedoms to practice their faith openly and, and to protect them. And, and I think this article is just taking the, 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 the discussion away from, from what's really pertinent right now. And I mean, like I said, I know personally... I think we just lost our connection with Hossein Mojadidi. We'll uh, try to get her back because she's based in Irvine. We're at 866-893-KPCC or the air talk page, kpcc.org. Hala Arafa, just a quick response, and then we'll go to listener calls. Um, it, it, what we had ex- expressed in the article are all our own beliefs. We are entitled to these beliefs, and it, 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 it does. I'm, I'm sorry that they are... The, the hijabi people are are um, facing any kind of discrimination, but at the same time, they are attacking us with the same fervor as, that they are experiencing. I would think that they will be the most sensitive ones to the freedom of belief and not call us leeches, unscrupulous, low, bigots, Islamophobes. Yeah, and Hossein, she, she's, uh, Hossein's not calling you that. I, you, you quote people who make those kinds of, of, you know, extreme claims and derogatory comments against women who don't cover. But, you know, what, what, uh, Hossein's point is that the timing for this is bad. When Muslim women who cover are targets of attacks, this isn't the time to be raising the, 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 the feminist perspective about the hijab as, as being anti-women. No, what, what the, the reason we wrote the whole article is that we feel they have, have hijacked Islam, and they are speaking for Islam. What we want, the media and the universities and the schools that have been invaded with this idea of hijab, is to understand that there are other people thinking differently, having a different experience, okay. and, and not to immediately go to this group that believes in strict Islam and make them the representative of the whole religion. All right, let's, let's take a listener call. This is from Batul in the city of Orange. You're on Air Talk. Yeah, hi. Um, I really like um, your speaker's comment about, um, you know, Islam is being, was being hijacked. Um, I was wearing a hijab since I was seven years old, and um, I think I called before, too. Last year, I, I just made the decision to take it off because of, uh, you know, just terrorists really giving Islam a bad name. Um, every time I went into a conversation with somebody when a mass shooting happened, I always felt the need to defend Islam and Muslims and say like, hey, you know, we're not like that. I'm actually part of a Muslim group that's a minority and we're targeted by ISIS too. And it got to a point where I just got really burnt out from saying the same thing over and over again. Um, It sounded robotic even to me. And really all I wanted to do is just sympathize with the victim, Um, especially after, you know, the San Bernardino shootings, because I work for the county of San Bernardino and I went to Cal State and um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, why Muslims are good people. Even even though, like, I'm a good person when I was a Muslim, 
I, I didn't feel the need to do that anymore because it's not about me. It's not about Muslims. It's about the, me, the victims and the dads and moms yeah. and lost, so, you know, like family members. Just to clarify, so it sounds like you felt that the headscarf got in the way, that your, your greater value could be having different kinds of conversations that were facilitated by not covering. Yes, because, you know, at the end of the day, I really didn't wake up every morning and remind myself why I was a Muslim. It, it, it wasn't about that. And, yes, I wanted to have a deeper conversation about how to help the victims. And, you know, like I wanted to, like, do a fundraiser and sell self at work to, like, raise money. That's, that's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. I didn't want to defend Islam anymore. Now, have, have, have you left the faith? Have you stopped practicing Islam? I, I, I did because uh, my attitudes about religion changed as well. Um, I used to think that if I took it off, I'd go to hell. Um, but, you know, I like I said, you know, when I called last time, I had to have a deeper conversation with myself. You know, God is loving and, and kind and fair, and I don't think that anymore. I think, like, morality can exist independently of religion. But to all do, so do, I, yeah. do people treat you differently not wearing yes. hijab now? You you see it a difference. Um, I'm sorry. What's your question? Yes, do you do people treat you differently, and if so, how so? Well, yes, because I blend into society. I mean, I'm I'm uh, I have like brown hair and like you know like olive toned skin, and I I just look like everybody else now. I I don't have to. I don't get dirty looks when I go to Target or you know like grocery stores anymore because. I did my share of, you know, like trying to be defending Islam and, you know, proving that I was a good person. I came here three months right before September 11, and I got flipped off. I got the dirty looks, and my life is a lot easier now. It's it's just my honest opinion. My life is a lot easier, and sometimes I wake up, and you know how people who have, like, an amputated leg have phantom leg pain? I still feel like... Oh, I'm missing something. But then yeah. I remember that I was in so much pain when I was a Muslim. That that limb was causing me so much pain, and I don't feel that pain anymore. But Tool, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, since seven, wore a hijab, uh, and now at 30, decided to stop wearing it. Uh, let's, let's hear from um, Lucia, who has the opposite perspective, because she is a convert to Islam. Uh, Lucia, North Hollywood, you're on Air Talk. Hello. Hi. So what's your experience? Do you cover now? I do cover, and I cover, um, and it's a form of modesty for me, and I respect uh, and don't have a, a an off opinion about a Muslim sister who chooses not to cover, and each person, I believe, is going to be judged in their own uh, on their own and independently. So I can't judge another person for for saying I don't want to cover. It is my personal choice to cover. Just like the niqab, which is the face cover that people wear, is a personal choice. And that is what Islam says. And that is what the scholars have said in the past, is that the face cover is a choice. And as a matter of fact, when we as Muslim women go to Mecca on Hajj, we're not allowed to cover our face when you're there on your Hajj trip. L- L- Lucia, so, let, me, let me ask you about whether you feel pressure one way or the other. After you converted to Islam, did you feel pressure to cover? Do you feel pressure not to cover now? Or, or, or do you feel like you, you haven't gotten hassled one way or the other? Um, I don't feel any pressure from anyone because I feel that I, I have my own empowerment uh, and I have my own choice at my disposal and in my hands. What I do get from people, and as I mentioned to, to the gentleman, is I'm a nurse and I'm a professional and I, ha- I actually do home visits. And the response that I get from most of my patients that I see and the people that I see and I have um, my interactions with on a daily basis are grateful for what I do for them. And I'm here to help people and to help those who are sick and frail. And I do my job with right. love and kindness. Lucia, I appreciate your call. Thank you. So we have contrasting views. Someone who was raised in the faith, who covered um, all all of her life until 30, uh, who was essentially left the faith, no longer covers. We have someone who converted to Islam, who does wear a headscarf. I'm asking Muslim women to join me 
need to talk about if you wear a headscarf or not, why you wear hijab or not, and what pressures, if any, you feel on either side of this to cover or not to cover. 866-893-KPECC, 866-893-5722, or the AirTalk page, kpecc.org. Jose Majadidi is an Irvine-based Muslim blogger. Um, Your thoughts on on women in Islam, do they face pressures on both sides that you've observed? Um, On both sides of what? To wear or not to wear. Well, I think, you know, it's it's a, it's a very subjective thing. And of course, if you're looking at, you know, traditional cultures or cultures where it's very commonplace for women to cover, yes, people from those particular cultures might feel pressure. But I think as American Muslim women, it's insulting for someone to assume that the the fact that I wear a hijab is because someone has coerced me. I have been, I was not born here, but I was raised here at a very young age. And many Muslim women who were born here identify as Americans. They exercise their rights and they have choices. And so for anybody to assume that it's automatically, it must have been, you know, some sort of a pressure or that they are confused about their the religion and they don't really understand and let me enlighten you. I think it's just insulting to our intelligence. Yep. We are educated. We, we read, we understand. Understand, and we make choices. I mean, I, for example, covered of my own volition. Nobody in my family covers. At the age of 20, I read my faith and I understood it and I embraced it. And one of the most beautiful verses of the Quran that I really, that really spoke to me, which is, uh, I think, very relevant in this conversation is God says in the Quran, let there be no compulsion in religion. So the idea that, again, anybody is forced is it's a subjective thing. And I can't well, yeah, speak let me for ask in your experience. Ex- yeah, well, I'm just saying your experience. And so with your friends who cover um, people in, in your Muslim peer group, if you were to stop covering, you think they'd be fine with that? There wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be criticized or, or have any no, negative feedback? No, of course feedback. not. They, they would definitely be compassionate because they would want to know, was there some harm to me? Was there, you know, what, what, what led that? So there might be concern, but there definitely wouldn't be any type of alienation. And not to say that that doesn't happen. I agree that there's a lot of ignorance on, on both sides and there are people out there who do judge unfairly those who, who don't wear hijab or who choose to take it off. And I don't agree with that at all. So I'm, you know, I think it's a Again, a very personal spiritual issue and people really should honor a woman's choice again asserting our american values as well as islamic values right. to have independent choice when it comes to these matters and that's one of the things that i think was lacking with this particular article that it didn't do that i mean they said in the title of the article as muslim women we actually ask you as one reader i read said it should have been as two muslim women because it's their perspective and they really don't have a place to tell other women what to do muslim and non-muslim women to cover or not to cover if those women choose to cover for whatever reason whether it's because of their faith or in solidarity with women who are being oppressed and who are really facing a lot of backlash i think that's an individual choice that should be honored and respected and nobody should tell them to do it or not to but do if, it. if 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 you if you have a group of people that believe that it's essentially sexist that it it disempowers women to cover you think they shouldn't feel free to say that no, they can say that, but again, time and place for everything. Right now, I feel that th- this whole issue of what women, Muslim women are going through has been hijacked because of, of an article that really is about pushing an agenda and okay. pushing an ideology. And Hello. I don't think that's, it's just not the right time for it. Hello, I Rafa. You... Their, and I respect their opinion. Okay. But I... Hello, Rafa. You want to respond to that? Yes. She wants me to time my expression of my own opinion, of my own ideas and ideology about my Islam to, uh, for her, uh, uh, I say she can believe in whatever she wants to believe in. She can practice Islam in whatever way. But if we want other people to know that there are different groups in in the Islamic religion that do not believe in the headscarves. So when they talk about they have become the poster children of Islam. It, it, immediately when you say Islam, everybody thinks of the headscarf. This is not, and I repeat, not the norm of Islam. We have many groups, and this is only one conservative, strict 
group that came out of Saudi Arabia in the 1980s. So when you deal with them, deal with them on that basis, not on the basis that okay. they are the representative of Islam. Let me let me take two more listener comments here. Sandina in Irvine, you're on Air Talk. What's your experience on covering? Um, I have a very positive experience of covering. Um, my father is Syrian and my mother is American. She's a convert. And when I first wanted to put the scarf on, uh, my dad actually told me not to. Um, he was afraid, you know, of what would happen um, as being, you know, an American Muslim girl. And he he wasn't, you know, against it. He just he just didn't feel it was right for me. Um, and I decided to put it on myself when I was 15. I got to a point in my life where I felt like I wanted to represent Islam in a, in a good way. And, you know, I mean, who am I to say I'm a good person? But I, I hope I am, and I believe that I am. And I felt like I just wanted to show people that, yes, I'm Muslim. I'm no different than you. Um, so you're, and, you're kind of an ambassador of your faith in, in covering. And have you faced um, much of what your father was concerned about? Um, you know, I'm proud to say I have not. Uh, the only time that anything has ever happened to me was right after September 11th. And that's understandable. You know, a lot of people didn't understand what Islam was, and it was being shown as terrorism. And a lot of people generalize. And, you know, I can do that, too. So I can understand, you know, why people would react that way. And I just felt like that, you know, well, I'm going to put this scarf on and I want to show people that this wasn't what Islam is. And, you know, a lot of people come up to me and ask me questions about wearing the scarf and, you know, what Islam is in general. And yeah. I feel happy that people are interested and they want to learn, like, what it really is about. Ms. Sandina, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks very much for sharing that. Um, and uh, let's see, we have Maham in San Bernardino says, uh, I wear hijab. A lot of people are scared, uh, particularly in San Bernardino, where she is, says it's a scary time to wear it, but we need to show support for women who wear hijab. And Mehdi in Beverly Hills says he was born and raised in Islam. He said there is pressure within the religion itself and Islamic countries for women to be covered. You can share your comments on the AirTalk page, kpcc.org. And my thanks to Hala Arafa, who co-wrote with Azra Nomani a piece for the Washington Post titled As Muslim Women, We Ask You Not to Wear the Hijab in the Name of Interfaith. And my thanks to Irvine-based Muslim blogger Hosai Majadidi, who also wrote a post about safety tips for Muslim women who wear hijab.